Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon a magnetic service. The energy of the day is so different than when my first experience took place with my partner. So much has taken place in a way we expected. My partner teaches about potentials and reality. And when I met him in 1989, the information I presented was as real then as it is now. That there would be no nuclear war at the millennium. That there would be a change of consciousness, that the magnetic grid of the planet would move. And now science has established a connection between human consciousness and that very grid. The science has been presented even this day showing that connection. And yet what I present next is the most esoteric thing you can imagine. I'll tell the story about free choice, about where it's taken you, about human consciousness development. It's not complex, but if you just tuned in, it may be a little too strange. Humanity has free choice not just to do what it wishes to do without intervention from spirit, but where it takes itself and its energy and its consciousness and how it works and thinks, either cooperates or doesn't. This is the free choice of humanity. The entire puzzle that is on this planet is not a test of humans. It's a test of energy. You live over and you live over and over and over. Is it possible through so many generations that you would be able to raise yourself from your bootstraps, increase the consciousness of humanity and graduate into that which is peace on earth and an entire different paradigm of existence? I came in in 1989 because that is the potential. And it's measured by something that I will now speak of. The entire reason that things took place in the 80s the way they did, the wild cards that you saw, even that which is the fall of the Soviets, all the unexpected things, there are more of them coming. They're a teller, uh, a message of changing times, of an increased consciousness where humanity starts to grow up. To get out of that which I call the playground of consciousness into an elegance of consciousness, one that creates togetherness and peace as just the beginning of a new kind of human, a new kind of society. But it wasn't always that way. I told you earlier we might, we might title this communication hearing the voice of spirit, hearing the voice of God. It's a metaphor, is it not? People who tune in spiritually don't normally hear a voice from the sky. It's a metaphor. Hearing the voice of spirit is a metaphor for being tuned in to the intuition within your own higher self so that you could connect with that which is greater than you are and hear, that is, in quotes, the information for you, the information for the planet. The reason it's so hard to hear this, it's a metaphor. Hearing is being intuitive. 
The whole reason that it's so difficult is because there's a low drone, you might say, a metaphor for, for a noise, a rumble, that seems to obfuscate, that is to cover up the messages. It's like trying to hear something while there's a noise. It's the best metaphor we can give. But the noise level is starting to decrease. And what happens when you get a better, clearer message? You change, the world changes, those around you also hear what's going on, even those who don't want to hear it, hear it. The metaphor is hearing. Don't leave this place thinking you're going to hear something with your ears. This is a metaphor. It's about being in tune with the intuition of knowing what's right and what's wrong, what's going on with you, with the enhancement of feeling potentials. All of that is hearing the voice of Spirit. Now, the hardest thing for us to teach is what my partner has been teaching for some years. The easiest way for you to approach this when he says that, that your DNA is not working at 100%. It is working in the 30 percentage area. In the 30s is where it is. It's not even at half. It's a metaphor. There's no instrument that is going to clamp around your DNA and give it a percentage. But it's the best we can do to tell you where you are at when it comes to the consciousness of humanity. Now, I want to give you some information just that is of, of interest, how this all started, where it went to. If you had to start a test of consciousness on the planet, it would have to be equal. You have to start with the same amount of light and dark. And we did. We've told you the history of humanity. It's short. With a planet that's been here for 4 billion years and you've been here for 50,000, it's short. Humanity as you know it really only started 200,000 years ago with the seeding process. 100,000 years ago when Lemuria was there. 50,000 years ago when it really was done and the test was working. You're new. You're new. All of known history filled with human beings fighting each other. You're new. And now it starts to change. The irony is that those listening to this and some of those in the audience have been there for all of it. <laughs> An old soul. We've given you this ex explanation many times. You, you remember what you think to be Atlantis. You remember what you think to be is this and that. And all of these things in your Akash will pop up. It just means you've been there and done that. You've seen the cataclysms. You've been there when things took place and they're etched into a memory you can't really grasp, but it's there. What it means is you know you're old. Maybe you helped start the planet. The sisterhood is a great example. And those of you who feel inclined to come to the sisterhood, even this night, a meeting that celebrates the beginning. It celebrates a time when women had that which is intuitive, and that is to say they were given the shamanic energies of the planet. Who better to have that than the life givers? It represents a time in the beginning of equality, of a wisdom that was the beginning of the test. The DNA at the beginning of the test was set at 30. <laughs> now stand by, because it doesn't sound equal, does it?
He quickly went to 35. Quickly. Because that's where it belonged to have full equality over the darkness. Now stay tuned. And what I mean by that is listen up. I'll give you something you should know. This shows you in the numbers the power of light over dark. When you got to 35% of DNA working, it was equal to 65% of darkness. Now, for those of you who don't really understand the numbers, it's not 50-50, but perceptually it was. Power-wise, it was. 35-65. 35 light, 65 dark was equal. It ought to tell you that the dark is weaker than you are. You had less of a percentage of the planet of light, and yet you were equal to a 65% darkness. Light is more powerful. You don't need as much of it to be equal. You started at 30, went to 35 almost instantly, you started to grow up because there was isolation. There wasn't too many of you. There was Lemuria. The Pleiadians were still here teaching you. And that is really where the test started. Now let me tell you something about what happens at 35. There is an intuitive understanding of gender balance on the planet. Who does what and why? It is what is celebrated in the Lemurian sisterhood. It is a time that the genders respect one another and understand that the feminine gender is the one that is more in touch with spirit. And that little bit of being more in touch is the fact that they give life. And therefore, they are the ones that would be in contact to help guide the societies. As soon as the DNA started to lose percentage, the gender balance was dysfunctional. If you want to have a test of any society anywhere on the planet, and you want to know where their DNA is as a society because it's different. What we give you is an average of where your DNA percentage is today, which I'm getting to. But if you went back and wanted to know where it was perhaps in the Middle Ages or perhaps before when you went to 25%, if you want to see it, all you have to do is look at gender dysfunction. The women went from respect and shamanship to second class, third class, along with the animals. No balance. That's what happens when the percentage starts to dip into survival. Non-elegance, non-appreciation, war, Hatred, uncaring, anger. And then it started to go up again. You hit the 30, and then 31, and then the average of 32. Oh, dear ones, there are still those on the planet. There's, there's tremendous gender dysfunction. You haven't returned to this. You're not going to get it again until you hit 35 and 40. And when you do, it's going to be so intuitive. You'll look backwards and say, what was wrong with us? That we didn't put those who could do it the best where they belonged. When it's a 25 and 30%, the strongest win. The ones with the most muscles win. Old, old thinking. Gender Disbalance. You want to see a balanced society working at 35 and above? You look at the gender balance. Respect. Appreciation. I'll give you something my partner always talks about. 
Find the oldest society, the most long-lived culture on the planet. Look at the indigenous and find out what they did. What do the records say? And I'll tell you what the records say. Women were the shamans. Women are the life givers. We say that over and over. They are close, close to spirit. They have a better intuitive ability. Imagine having somebody to be able to guide who can see it and feel it. And the voice of God is clear to them. That's gender balance. The men knew it. The men depend upon it. And the women depended upon the men to do the things that men do best. Gender balance. It's still around in the indigenous who've been around a long time. It never changed. When it got to 32, I spoke to my partner because the snowball was rolling. And we had seen it before. This planet was starting to lift itself up on its way to 35, on its way to an equal balance, maybe even 36, where dark would run the other way. Dear ones, if 35 is equal, you've never seen that in your lifetime until right now. You're almost there. Dark is running the other way. It's coming out of the woodwork, as they say. Imagine a dark army who can recruit from your own country those who can only see darkness, who will run to join them in order to be dysfunctional with them. They haven't got a clue. Darkness cannot look up to a higher level. Listen to me. Darkness cannot look up and see light. It only sees the strength of dark. It doesn't understand that it is so defeatable. It doesn't understand it's going to lose. All it can see is itself. That's all it can see. It's so obvious, is it not? What is going on right now in this planet? We said it earlier, right now, as I speak, you have the most dysfunctional politics you've ever had in this country, ever. And it represents those who are tired of the old and the establishment is no longer wanted or needed. Anything would be better than what you had. This is different. And it's because of a continued increase in the percentage of DNA. Those women and men on this planet who would never be in a room like this to hear channeling are feeling it. Integrity. Transparency. The longing for something that works. The longing to know that if you pay taxes, it's going to something that works. The longing to know that if somebody gets elected, they'll have integrity to steer you on a path that helps that which is what you call your country. Integrity in high places instead of dysfunction. A population that is tired of an old energy because they're starting to hear the voice. The voice of spirit is for all humanity and not for a select few. But the select few will understand it better and be able to cling to it and know what it says. But as the noise and the confusion and the drone of darkness starts to become more equal to the light, you can start winning, you can start hearing it. And those who don't hear it or don't what it is or not interested in being in this room, all it is to them is a new beginning, a new awareness. They don't know what they're hearing. They don't know what they're feeling. They just know they want change. 
the old souls recognize it for what it is and start working with it and know that they can cling to it, get messages from it and guidance from it. That's the difference. But all humanity, all humanity is aware of it, all of it. You're creeping, creeping toward 36. Even with the things that are around you, as you defeat the darkness on this planet, you'll be at 36. Now that means you're winning. It also means the drone that hides the voice of God is going to start diminishing and things start to clear up. Intuition won't come by so fast that you don't know what you heard. Intuition will stick around, will speak to you in a clearer voice. You may even be able to stop it and examine it. The problem with intuition is it's covered by the drone. It's a metaphor. I hope you understand. Covered by the drone means that your intuitive thoughts are so elusive because this underlying energy keeps it from being seen and heard. The logic inside your brain stuffing it down all of the time saying it's not accurate or perhaps it's just you wishful thinking is all part of that which is the percentage of your DNA. And as it starts to creep toward 36, everything changes. The logic of your brain changes because it's in the DNA. There's an awakening, a more efficient DNA. You think differently. All the things that you've been told about in psychology start to morph into something else. Wisdom becomes intuitive, not something that you wish you had. Society starts to change overall in general. Solutions to the unsolvable begin to happen. New thought. Growing up. When you can hear better the voice of spirit. Dear ones, you're at 35. The average. Some on this planet are still at 27. How can you tell? How they treat their women. Gender balance. Now I want to say something so that nobody misunderstands that. There are different doctrines around this planet that are beautiful. With masters who have come from the cultures of the doctrines. Tell about the beauty and the love and the equality of God and the Creator. And all of them preach togetherness. And all of them preach one Creator. But it's the men and the women who interpret it for their own use who you're looking at. The doctrine may be right on, it's the percentage of wisdom that interprets the doctrine that you're looking at at 27 percent. The doctrines on this planet almost without question teach the beauty of God. The togetherness. The way you can work together and worship the same God without killing each other. All of them. Even the ones that seem to be at odds with each other. If you study it and you want to see what the masters really said, they said, love each other. Love each other first and emulate God. That's what the doctrines of the planet say. You're at 35. There's an equality here. You're starting to see with dark and light, and it's changing everything. You take a look at history, and you've come a long way. It took a long time to get here. Dear ones, we've seen it before. The snowball is rolling. And there isn't anything that's going to stop it. And in its path are all kinds of things it's going to run over. And part of the things it's going to run over are the establishment. 
And if it does not change, I want you to watch for some very big established things to fall over. And the snowball will simply knock them down. Don't be alarmed. Don't think it's the end of the planet. When certain kinds of things happen that would create fear, it's just about being at 35. You're in the right place at the right time. I've said enough. When you walk out of here, I hope you understand this message. Listen to it again if you have to. It's about that which is the light and dark quotient of the planet and you. It's about the fact that you're winning. And that's why I came. Because it's hard to talk to those who are winning when they've never won before and they have a consciousness of loss. That's what you're working on. Stand tall when you leave this place and know who you are. The message of Cryon never changes. It's inside. That's where the creative source is and has always been. And you've got it. And so it is.